today's lesson, I want to talk about what this world would be like if there wasn't love, if there wasn't mercy, if there wasn't grace. You know, I think we all grew up as kids feeling like we're entitled to certain things, and very often we'd say in life, it isn't fair, this isn't fair. And then too often as adults, people grow up with that sense of entitlement, and they feel like they're not getting what they deserve. But today I'd like for you to think for a moment, is that really what you want? Do you really want to live in a world of absolute justice? See, often we feel like other people deserve to be punished, or we deserve to have some benefit. But do you really want to live in a world where everyone gets what they deserve? Often we want other people to get what they deserve, but do you really want what you deserve from other people? And even more importantly, do you want what you deserve from God? There was a man in the Bible by the name of Noah. And God had created Adam and Eve and told him to replenish the earth. And several generations later, God looked down on the earth and that generation where Noah lived was absolutely corrupt. And God said he saw great wickedness in the earth. And when he looked at men, he said, every imagination and purpose in their hearts was only to do evil continuously. And as God looked down at his creation, it says it grieved him. God was grieved in his heart, and he even repented that he had made man. And in Genesis 6, it says that all the world was worthy of death. Everyone in the world was deserving of death. And God said, I will blot out this man that I have created. I will wipe him out from the face of the earth. And when I think about today, I wonder, is the world that we live in any worse? Is the imagination in men's hearts more evil than it was then? I, I see the crimes and, and the selfishness that's in the world. And, and I wonder, are we any worse than that world that God saw when he looked down at the world of Noah? The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's true then and it's true now. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. In Romans chapter 6, it said that's what we deserve. A wage is something that we feel like we've earned, we've worked for it and we're getting back what we deserve. And the Bible says the wages of our sinful nature, the wages of our sinful conduct, the thing that we have earned is death. That's the wages of sin. That's, that's an example of men getting exactly what they deserve from God. When we think about fairness, we're thinking about what's fair in this world. But even more important is what do we deserve from God? If we were to get what we deserve from God, that would be justice. And is that really what we want? The Bible says that there was one man, his name was Noah, and he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. God looked at the world and he saw a world full of corruption. But he looked and he saw one man who was worthy of grace. And that man's name was Noah. And God said that Noah would not get what he deserved. Noah was not a perfect man. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, and I'm sure that Noah had committed sin in his life because the Bible said we have all sinned. So Noah received this gift of grace from God. He received the offer of salvation, the saving of his family. Just as God offers us eternal life, it is a gift from God. And I've wondered, what was it about Noah that made him deserving of this favor or this mercy or grace in his life? In verse 9, it says he was a just man. Did he receive God's favor because he was just? Was he a perfect man? Had he lived his life without sin? Did he earn favor by his conduct? No. The end of that verse says, this is the reason that Noah received favor from God, because he walked with God. That's been God's plan from the beginning. When he created Adam, he placed him in the garden, and he came down in the cool of the evening, and he walked with him. There was another godly man by the name of Enoch, and it says he walked with God. 
And he was accounted righteous because of that walk with God. And one day God took him to be with him. That's God's plan, to walk with us. Jesus walked with his disciples in the New Testament. And God's plan is to walk with us in this life and to have fellowship and communion with us. In fact, favor from God comes only one way. It's from having that right relationship with him. When we have a right relationship with Jesus Christ, then we have a right relationship with the Father. It's our only hope. However, in the Old Testament, in that Old Covenant, the only way you could have a relationship with God was through obedience to the law. God had given commandments to Moses. Moses had written them down and given them to the people. And he said, if you obey and do these things, you will have favor with God. And it's spelled out in Deuteronomy 28. And God said, if you obey these commandments, then you will get these blessings. These blessings will come on you and overtake you. The way to have favor with God and blessing from God was to keep his commandments. But then in verse 15 of Deuteronomy 28, God said, if you do not obey, then these curses will come upon you. If you do not keep my commandments, then these curses will come and overtake you. And that was the punishment for disobeying God's law. But even though that law offered them an opportunity to receive God's blessing, it demanded perfection. And Joshua said in chapter 1, if you obey all of these laws, if you obey all of these commandments, then these blessings will come on you. That was the shortcoming of the Old Testament law, because no one could keep all of the law. There was none righteous, not one. And no one could keep all of the law in order to inherit all of the blessing of God. And that's why Jesus had to come to become a man, to come and walk among us, to live a life of perfection and obedience to all of God's commandments so that he could be the one to inherit all of the blessings that God had promised to Abraham and to Moses. The law was only meant to be temporary. It couldn't change the hearts of the men who heard it. But the law provided an opportunity for men to have a relationship and a standing with God until that which was perfect would come. And that perfect one was Jesus. And he was the one who lived the perfect life. And that's why he could announce to his disciples at the Last Supper, this is the blood of a new covenant. And it's established on my blood because the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sin. This new covenant is based on grace. It's not about the law. It's not about performance. It's not about doing everything perfectly according to the law because none of us are perfect. It's based on grace. The new covenant that we have with our Father in heaven is based on grace and not the law. True love was demonstrated by the Father when he was willing to give his Son as the sacrifice for our sin. Because of grace, we do not get the punishment that we deserve. Jesus Christ came to take the punishment that we deserve. Jesus took upon himself the sins of the world, and he went to hell to pay that penalty for our sin. And after that penalty was paid, God restored him back to fellowship. And he was risen from the dead physically and spiritually. He was alive again in fellowship with the Father. And because of him, all the blessings that were promised to believers and those who lived in obedience to God's law, all of those blessings are now made available to us. Not because we have earned them, but because Jesus Christ has earned them. And because of his grace and his love and his mercy, he is willing to give us what we don't deserve. That's what grace is. Receiving the gifts, the blessings of God that we don't deserve. So because of Jesus Christ, the punishment that we deserved under the old covenant, we do not get. And because of grace in the New Testament, the blessings of the Old Covenant that we could have never received are now available to us because of grace. 
The Bible said we enter into this grace by a relationship with Christ and only by a relationship with Jesus Christ. The new covenant is not based on our performance and obedience to the law. Our relationship with God the Father in the new covenant is based on our relationship with Jesus Christ. The Gospel of John says that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace wasn't in the world before Jesus came. God showed his grace to Noah and, and saved him and his family. But this covenant of grace became available to us because Jesus came and it says he was full of grace and truth. The law came from Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus came and walked among us and he demonstrated that grace and mercy that God wanted to give us. And only our faith in Jesus Christ as Savior can give us this peace with God. It allows us to be saved from death. Peter started walking on the water that day and, and he had an invitation from the Lord, but he got his eyes off of Jesus and he began to sink. And the Lord reached down his hand and lifted him up and saved him from death by drowning. But our Lord does the same thing for us. He reaches out his hand and if we will come to him, he will draw near to us, cleanse us from our sin, and he will lift us up and bring us to a place of salvation as well. Paul talked about that in Romans chapter 5. He said, we have access by faith into this grace wherein we now stand. If we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, we do not have to worry about standing before the Father at the judgment seat of Christ, worried about receiving what we deserve. Even though all of us have sinned, if we receive Jesus Christ, it gives us access to a place of grace where we can stand before the Father and receive his mercy and his grace. We do not get what we deserve, we get mercy. We do get what we don't deserve, the blessing of God, and that is grace. And because of our faith in Jesus Christ, Paul said, that puts us in a place of access to that grace and mercy and blessing where we can stand. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, your position changes from standing in a place of judgment to standing in a place of mercy and grace. You change from standing in a place where you are going to receive death and as you receive Christ, you begin to stand in a place where you receive eternal life. It sounds so amazing and wonderful, and, and we say, why would God extend this favor to us? Why would God extend that kind of an offer of free mercy, grace, and salvation to us apart from any merit on our part? Paul answers that question in Ephesians chapter 2. And he said, because of God's great love, he is rich in mercy towards us. The reason he's willing to show mercy and grace to us is because of his great love. In the epistle of John, it says God is love. He not only has love, he is love. That's who he is. It radiates from him. Just like our sun is a ball of burning hydrogen, our sun is light our sun is heat yes it gives light yes our sun gives off heat and that's because that's what it is it is a burning light and god is love and because he is love love radiates from him he gives off love that's his divine nature and here's the reason why he does it so that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace God, I believe, has a plan to demonstrate through his relationship with us to the devil and to the fallen angels, to demonstrate his love, his goodness, his righteousness. And God is demonstrating through that relationship that he has with us, the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through and because of Jesus Christ. It's not a set of rules that we have to obey. What God wants from us is a loving relationship with his son. 
We celebrate Valentine's Day and we're thankful for the loving relationships that we have here on this earth. But how much more important is it that we celebrate the greatest love story, the greatest love relationship that's available to us or to anyone in the world? And that's a relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know, I think the best example I've used over the years of our relationship with Christ and Savior is like that of a bride and groom. One that says, I, Jim Bauer, take you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior, to have and to hold from this day forward, to love and to cherish, to forsake all others, and to cling to you and be faithful to you in good times, in bad times, in sickness and health, for richer, for poor. I will forsake all others and cling to you for all the days of my life. This is my solemn vow and promise. You know, and that's the kind of relationship that Christ wants to have with us. And, and those vows will be completed when we get to heaven. And we will celebrate with him the wedding of the bride and the groom. And then we will have the marriage supper of the Lamb. And we will live and reign with him forever. That's what God's plan is for us. It's an offer. You know, it's kind of like uh, the goal of so many young women who dream of the day when a handsome man will come and say, will you marry me? And that's the offer that we have from Jesus Christ. He comes to us and he says, will you marry me? Will you have this intimate relationship with me here on the earth? And then we will live and dwell together forever. That's why we receive the blessing and favor from God the Father. It's not based on our behavior. It's based on a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think that will be the criteria for that day of judgment. How have you treated my son, Jesus Christ? For those who honor and love the son, they will receive the gifts, the favor of God forever. But for those who reject the son and deny Jesus Christ, they will receive the punishment and the wrath of the Father, not because of their deeds, but because of their rejection of his Son, Jesus Christ, because he is the only hope for us to have access and mercy and grace from the Father. And it is a free gift. He gives it to us because he loves us. We are his creation. Jesus said, if you as earthly fathers want to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven want to give good gifts to his children? God loves you very much. We quote the scripture often, John 3:16, that says, For God so loved the world, that's you, that he would give his only begotten Son, and whosoever will believe in him. See, everything we have from God is based on our relationship with him. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God has given us so much. His blessing, his favor in this life, and we will experience his eternal blessings forever. So while we're here on this earth, Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. Everything that we get from God is free. And he gives it to us free because of our relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. And all he asks is, because you have received so generously from me, give freely to others. Jesus gave some examples. He said, blessed are those who give mercy, for they will obtain mercy. If you want to have friends, be a friend. If you want forgiveness from God, Jesus said to forgive those who sin against you. I don't want to live in a world of justice. I don't want to live in a world where I get what I deserve. I don't want the punishment that I deserve. I want favor. I want to live in a world where the mercy of God is made real in my life. I want mercy from the Father, not justice. I want mercy from the men around me, not justice. I don't want what I deserve. I want grace. And I believe that's God's plan for our lives. If you want to receive God's love, 
then love his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, this is the greatest commandment in all of the law. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart. And then part two, he said, is love your neighbor as yourself. If you want to receive God's gift of grace, receive his son, Jesus Christ. If you want to have his favor in this life, then give grace and mercy to those around you. Freely we have received, let us freely give. You know, this Valentine's Day, we, we talk about love and, and we value the friendships and relationships we have here on this earth. But I believe this Valentine's Day, we should focus on the greatest love that's available to man. And that's the love that God the Father has for us as his child. And once we've received that love from God, forgiveness of sin and and the promise of eternal life, then we should freely share and demonstrate that love with others around us. God is love. It radiates from him because that's who he is. And if we have received God's nature, then we should do likewise. Demonstrate, let God's love, mercy, and grace flow from our lives. Be generous. If you want to receive generously from God, then give generously in your relationship with others in this life. God loves you very much. He sent his son to die and pay the penalty for your sin so that you would not have to receive justice from God, but mercy. So that you could have grace and receive all of his gifts. Freely received, freely give. And Jesus said, others will know that you are my disciples because you love one another. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the incredible love that you've demonstrated to us through Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for offering us mercy and grace. Lord, I do not want to be judged for my sins. Lord, you've promised that if I confess them, you're willing to forgive them, put them in a sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered against me. Lord, you've said that if I would ask, you would give freely of your Holy Spirit and, and the divine nature would come and live and dwell in my life. And Lord, I pray that each one listening today wants that thing. And I pray that they will turn and ask you and receive from you that very blessing. May your goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh.